गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी गुड मॉर्निंग सर सो वेलकम वन एंड ऑल टूडे इन अवर पी एच डी वेबिनार सीरीज वी आर हैविंग अवर ट्वेंटी कॉन्जिक्यूटिव स्पीकर एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट मैनी पार्टिसिपेंट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया आर अटेंडिंग द सीरीज एंड आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट डॉक्टर अरविंद देशमुख सर All India President, Microbiology Society of India, to speak few words. One. I am very happy today. Uh, one more research fellow from Chandigarh. He is going to present his research on Indian medicinal plants because. NEP national education policy has given importance to ayurvedic science that is a medicinal plant and we are compelled to exploit medicinal plant the reason is that day by day antimicrobial resistance is increasing so today's research again i will request all others to mute mute their mic please everyone mute their mic so that there should not be Swamini Deshmukh, please mute your mic. Malini Basu, ma'am, please mute your mic. Mute your mic. Okay, thank you. So I wish all the best for this series. I welcome uh, Samriti Dogra, ma'am, for you, in the sir. today's today's platform. And uh, I am thankful to all attendees today. More than. Thirty-four attendees are there. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, all the best, Dr. J. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So today is our speaker, uh, Dr. Samriti Dogra. She is currently working as assistant professor, Department of Biotechnology, Dow Postgraduate College, Chandigarh. Ma'am has done her PhD in 2021 from Punjab University, Chandigarh. Uh, Dr. Samriti has done her MSc Biotechnology and BSc Biotechnology from the same university, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Uh, in interest of time, I welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Samriti Dogra, to start her presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So, uh, so the topic of my presentation is the isolation, purification, and characterization of antimicrobial peptides from selected plants. And my supervisors are Dr. Kapil Viswas and Dr. Rajesh Viswas. So background. So the antibiotics, which have saved the millions of lives through the decade, is losing its effectiveness for the treatment of many diseases due to rapid rapid uh, due to rapid emergence of resistant microorganisms in 2012 who reported that around 1 lakh 70000 people died globally just because of multi drug resistant tuberculosis infection the antibiotic resistance is usually a normal phenomena adopted by bacteria through a mutation against antimicrobial agent for their own survival so antimicrobial resistance is mainly caused due to the misuse and the overuse of medication the prolonged use of the same drug uh, and the lack of new drug developments this all leads to the development of superbugs and the multi drug resistant microorganisms by 2050 it was estimated that another 10 million people will die of due to just because of drug resistant micro a microorganism alone which is more than the people die due to the road accident and cancer combined So in 2012, 17, approximately 12.9 into 10 raised to over nine units of antibiotics were used solely by India. Therefore, India has been assigned as an the antimicrobial resistant capital of the world. The rapid increase in drug resistance infection has presented a serious challenge for the researcher to find out the novel approach in the development of antibiotics for the substitution of synthetic drugs, uh, antimicrobial drugs selection of. plants as a source of novel drug is an alternative a being for is open for the world so plant having the antimicrobial activity are associated with the occurrence of active compounds like phenols flavonoids quinines alkaloids terpenoids and essential oils etc and 
antimicrobial peptide. And so antimicrobial peptides, AMPs, have been described as evolutionary Asian weapons against the microbial infection. So antimicrobial peptides are basically a small basic hey, molecules, oh, stream huh? which positively charge Check. around 10 to 50 amino acids in length, ranging from 2 to 9 kilodaltons, having a high proportion of hydrophobic amino acid and often displays a helical structure. Antimicrobial peptides play a vital role in innate immunity by providing the first line of defense against the pathogen. Plants are one of the largest source of antimicrobial molecules, including the antimicrobial peptide that kill the pathogens by interacting with the phospholipids and membrane permeabilization. Plant antimicrobial peptides, sometimes called as PAMPs, can act as alternative approach for the development of new antibiotics. PMPs comprise of six main families, theonins, defensins, lipid transfer proteins, cyclotidins, snakeins, and like peptides. Based on the mood of PMPs, many researchers propose various models like barrel shaft, carpet-like, and troidal. The figure showing the three models, how the peptide bind on the surface and how they interact, how they cause pores, uh, mainly uh, causing the pores and ultimately to the death of the microorganism. So PMPs exert multifarious actions on the microbes, which include the binding of PMPs to certain factors like the replicating enzyme, transcription factor, translation factors, and many cofactors, which ultimately leads to termination of DNA synthesis, transcription, and the translation, which ultimately leads to the death of the microorganism. Though the plant diversity is vast, still only 273 PAMPs were reported in the FIGHT AMP database, which is specifically dedicated to a plant antimicrobial peptide. According to the NCBI, only 1.38% entries were registered for antimicrobial peptides under the plant kingdom. Another database, CAMPR3, in this 1,310 antimicrobial peptide sequence were reported under very deep plant tea category. So why plants are chosen? Plants are not themselves under the attack of human pathogen. Therefore, it is unlikely that these pathogens will get exposed to the PMPs and or modify themselves to become a resistant against these PMPs. So Indian plant biodiversity constitutes around 11.7% of the world flora with of which 28% are endemic. However, only few reports are available on the isolation and characterization of PMPs from Indian subcontinent. Therefore, my doctorate work was aimed to explore the medicinal plant from the India, other than reported earlier for the isolation and characterization of the PMPs up to the structure level and verify their biological activities and categorize them in two specific families. So my objectives are isolation of proteins from medicinal plant, then primary screening for the protein extract for antimicrobial activity, then dialysis, then again activity was uh, screened, then the purification using the various techniques like HPLC, uh, gel filtration chromatography, then characterization using CD, tricin SDS page, then sequencing of either by C terminal or full length sequencing, then in silico identification of protein base, uh, for the structure similarity and the biological testing of antimicrobial peptides. So what is the methodology I followed? So first I select, uh, selected the 13 medicinal plant from the um, uh, area like Punjab and uh, native from the Himachal and few from the uh, other places. So first I isolate the protein using ammonium sulfate precipitation method. Uh, then antimicrobial assay was carried out, then protein estimation using Bradford, then out uh, on the basis of antimicrobial activity and the protein concentration and the availability of the plant. Uh, five plants were selected and the molecular weight was calculated using the Tricin SDS page. And then the protein was concentrated using, again, uh, seven direct 75% ammonium sulfate precipitation. Then uh, purification was carried out uh, using gel filtration and HPLC. An alternate method was used for the purification in which ultrafiltration membranes were used, then characterization using maldi tof tof ms ms uh, tricin sds space cd was carried out. In silico characterization was carried out using various tools like BLAST PCDD, Interpro Scam, Smart Tool, IC, uh, and 3D Viewer. And biological activity for biological activity, MIC and hemolysis assay was carried out. So I think uh, this is 
All about the detail uh, of my uh, methodology. First is the collection and preservation of medicinal plants. Uh, plants, the different parts of the plants were collected from various fields, even vegetable markets of Chandigarh, Mohali, Punjab, and some from the Himachal also. And they were collected, they were washed properly, and they were dried properly, and then stored in, at minus 20 degrees Celsius for a long time. No. This is a list of 13 plants which I have used mm -hmm. with the common name and the part which yeah. I use. Sometimes I use the leaves, sometimes I use the leaves plus flowers and it all depends on the availability. So these are the photographs of few plants which I have selected and few uh, microorganisms were procured from the MTCC for checking the antimicrobial activity. So uh, how to prepare the crude extract? Uh, powder was Powder in PBS buffer was dissolved, then freezing and thawing treatment. Here is the most important one thing I did because in I in my uh, institute, I do not have a facility of liquid nitrogen. So I have to go to another uh, institute for that purpose. But again, uh, I just skipped that part and I used the freezing and thawing treatment. It takes time. It takes around three to four days for freezing and thawing. And then I used to uh, centrifuge at four degrees and then uh, supernatant was uh, collected and stored. And that in that supernatant, ammonium sulfate precipitation was carried out and then antimicrobe. Then the pellet was stored in PBS buffer and aliquoted and then at minus 20, they were stored. So this is table. Uh, so protein quantification using the Bradford method, standard Bradford, uh, using BSA as a standard protein. Antimicrobial activity was carried out using well diffusion assay. And dialysis, uh, dial for dialysis, I used the two dialysis membrane, one for the 1KDA uh, molecular weight cutoff and another which is specific Emicon ultra, ultra filter membrane, which is uh, for the 10 kilodaltons membrane. Then tricin STS page. Uh, tricin is basically um, a compound which is which help in the resolution of uh, proteins less than 30 kilodaltons. So here I am interested in the proteins less than uh, 10 to, to 9 kDa. So I use 16% tricin STS page here. Mm -hmm. Then gel uh, filtration chromatography for this. I use the Cephadex G50 column. Reverse phase chromatography, G silica, uh, G18 silica column is used with the solution of uh, is ACN plus 0.1% uh, TFA. Then uh, Malditoff is uh, performed uh, using a standard protocol. These are all the standard protocols and Malditoff of MS, MS was performed. Then CD was performed. Uh, then in silico identification of peptide was carried out using the BLAST-P conserved domains, interpro scams, uh, simple mod modular architecture research tool. These are all the tools. Then protein homology and protein recognition, PIR2, then ICN3, D viewer. These are all the tools which I used for the in silico identification. Then biological assay using a uh, standard protocol for MIC determination and uh, for the erythrocyte uh, hemolysis assay. So stats was, will be there. So main part is results. So, so now this uh, figure is showing the standard BSA uh, using for which I have used so uh, these are the uh, tables showing the zone of inhibitions of the antibiotics I use uh, antibiotics against the specific uh, microorganism uh, five different types of microorganisms i selected <laughs> and these are the <laughs> zones of inhibition uh, of the positive control and here I started with the plants so plants are selected as i said depending upon the families in the pmp so i just screen the pmp database and select out the families uh, which shows the antimicrobial activity then select out then search for the uh, plants which are available to my vicinity nearby so that i can uh, have that plants and then i will search for the antimicrobial peptides. So Argimon is the first plant uh, showing the, this uh, figure is showing the protein concentration in various protein pellets uh, different after ammonium sulfate and the zone of inhibition was recorded. Then again, I'm not going into so much detail because it is cumbersome. Uh, so again, uh, second plant, Argimon Mexicana, different variety, leaf extract was, and you can see the zone of uh, inhibition against candida and Brevia diffusa showing the 
maximum protein concentration in 50% protein pellet and the activity, very less activity against Spilococcus aureus and bacillus, uh, figure showing the zone of inhibition. Borivia erecta having a leaf and root of track, uh, maximum um, protein concentration was present in the 90% protein pellet in leaf and in case of root extract, maximum concentration of present in the 90% again. So here showing the zone of inhibition bacillus, against the bacillus, against the phylococcus, and very minimal in E. coli, but no activity against candida. Uh, figure showing the zone of inhibitions. So uh, Bougainvillea shubra cultivar, again in this, I use the leaf and flower extract and maximum concentration uh, in case of flower is present in the leaf a 25% 20, protein pellet. And in case of leaf, maximum concentration was present in the 50%. And here, a Shubra cultivar leaf extract showing the maximum activity of 6.9 against Cephalococcus aureus. And flower extract showing activity against Candida, not against uh, Staphylococcus aureus. This uh, showing the zone of inhibition. You can see the zone of inhibition. Uh, Bougainvillea, Texas King, here the leaf and flower extract both are used and the maximum protein concentration was observed in 50% and in case of flower extract and in case of leaf extract, maximum concentration was recorded in uh, 25%. This is the flower extract showing the activity against Pylococcus aureus and the leaf extract showing the activity against Canada albicans. And these are the few figures. So uh, Next is Casia sophera showing protein concentration maximum at 75 and the zone against Staphylococcus aureus and in, against Bacillus. These are the photographs showing the zone of inhibition, very minimal. Q then next is melon, Cucumis melon, showing maximum protein in 50% and the activity against uh, Staphylococcus aureus and the candida. So here are the zone of the inhibitions. Uh, the Dura inoxia, in which I use the leaf and seed extract. Uh, showing the protein concentration maximum in the um, 50 and 75 percent in leaf extract. In case of uh, seed extract, maximum against 75 percent. Uh, this is showing the leaf extract having the uh, activity against the phylococcus and aureus and bacillus subtilis. Uh, again, the seed extract showing the activity against bacillus subtilis. So these are the figures showing the zone of inhibition. Of so next is Momodica cheranthia. Momodica cheranthia showing the maximum concentration uh, in 50% protein pellet and showing the zone of inhibition against Phylococcus aureus and Bacillus subtilis. So these are the zone of inhibitions. Next is Tranthema portula castrum showing maximum in 50% protein pellet and the zone was recorded against Phylococcus and Bacillus subtilis. So these are the zones. Next, trichosanthus dioecia, a maximum protein concentration present in 50% protein pellet and activity was recorded against Staphylococcus aureus and bacillus. These are the figures showing the zone of inhibitions. Then uh, solen solenum xanthocarpum, uh, this is showing maximum protein concentration in 75% and the zone of inhibition was recorded against bacillus, candida and in some in Staphylococcus aureus also. So these are the zones. So after that, I selected third, five plants. Out of 13, I selected the five plants on the basis of availability of plant plots, which is a limitation factor. You are not able to get a plant uh, from the field, from the vegetable of the same type again and again. So on the basis of that availability, antimicrobial peptide uh, activity, and the protein concentration, these five plants were selected, which was carried, subjected to 16% tricin gel for the determination by either we get a ban of less than uh, 10 kilodalton, which is desirable, desirable or not. So we carried out the tricin 16% gel uh, for all the five plants. You can see different bands different bands all the five plants so after that after the five plant screening what we do we just concentrate the protein sample because we observed that we got a zone after mostly after 75 percent and we got a good percentage of protein so what we do we just do a direct 75 percent protein cuts of selected four plant now uh, the plant which is not showing the peptides or you can see the bands less than which is required less than 10 kilodaltons. I just uh, 
lose that plant. I just remove that plant from my selection criteria. Then I select only the four plants, which is having the bands less than telcular data and showing the good activity again. So I concentrate the protein and you can see the concentration of different protein, different plants having different. So, so this extract was carried uh, again tested for antimicrobial activity before and after dialysis. And uh, we observed that we got a result that all the four plants showing activity against the gram-positive bacteria, not showing activity against selected gram-negative and the fungi. These are the figures showing the zone of inhibition. So antimicrobial activity was recorded against the selected gram-positive bacteria. This indicates that the proteins of the peptide might interact with the lipid molecules on the bacterial surface and by thereby interacting with the other target in the cytoplasm, which ultimately leads to death. But in case where we do not have activity against the gram-negative and the fungi, so in the literature, it was reported that omptin like peptide proteases are present in the gram-negative bacteria like E. coli, which interact with the peptide and degrade the active peptide. So peptide is not able to enter within the gram-negative bacteria. Similarly, glycosyramide is a compound, is a molecule which is present in the membrane of fungus, which interact with these active peptides and they break these peptides or make them a non-active molecule so that they just grow and they are, or you can say they are resistant to that particular AMPs. So tricin was carried out for all the four plants. We have um, less than 10 kilodaltons in all the four. So we screen, do the further screening of all the four. So tricin has a STS page, including uh, indicate that they are the protein extract comprised of high molecule as well as the low molecular. So few reports also suggested that the proteins and the peptides larger than nine kilodaltons also have antimicrobial activity. So this is the gel filtration curves of all the four plants for the isolation. And H this is the reverse phase chromatic high performance liquid chromatic graphy. So uh, in my study, the proteins and peptide purified from, I'm not able to purify uh, from the HPLC and gel filtration chromatography. This might be due to uh, the low concentration of the peptide. And this might be due to the degradation of peptide during the vacuum drying, which I use for the concentration. And many of the peaks I obtain as fused or merged peaks. Uh, so it was very difficult for me uh, to separate that. So what I did, we use an alternative method for the purification. In this, we used um, ultra filter membrane, uh, centrifugal membranes of specifically of 10 kilodaltons. And then we filter the our protein samples of all the four plants. And then we lifelize that. And then we observe different concentration. In case a very minimal amount of protein was uh, observed, uh, similar with the trichosanthus. Only uh, the Tura in Oxia and Momodica shows a good percentage um, that is of protein after lifelization. So when I run the two samples, that is of the Tura and the Inoxia, um, the Tura Inoxia and Momodica Chantha on 16% tricin SDSF, we observed that we got a single band in case of Momodica Chantha, that is of the 3.7 kilodaltons. But in case of the Tura Inoxia, we do not observe any band. We do not observe. So luckily, uh, in case of Momodica, we received a single band of 3.7 kilodaltons. Of that purified uh, peptide, I do MIC, and we observe that the against Bacillus subtilis, the MIC value is 65.2 micrograms per ml, but against uh, Bacillus lichenifermis and S. aureus, the MIC value is 87 micrograms per ml. So these are the graphs showing the MIC against the different microorganisms. So erythrocyte hemolysis assay was carried out using the purified peptide, and it was shown that the hemolysis of RBCs were not observed between 21.7 micrograms to 130 using the concentrated pure peptide, which is the this source result is highly significant, highly significant. Because previous reports suggested that if the hemolysis does not occur at the MIC value of the peptide, it could be used as drug in the therapeutic treatment. If the drug is showing antimicrobial, but same time hemolysis occur, we, we are not able to use that drug. But in case of my peptide, the MIC value is 
at MIC, no hemolysis occurs, means we can use that drug for the, uh, use that peptide as a drug in therapeutics. So a single purified peptide having antimicrobial activity and non-hemolytic properties were isolated from the Momodica charanthi, that is common name is Karela seeds. This purified peptide was named as MOCH1 peptide. So further characterization of MOCH1 uh, using maldi tof ms and MS-MS, these are the results for ms -R. And from that MS result, we find out that our sample found to be similar with the trypsin inhibitor extracted from the Momodica conchinchinesis. So here showing the similarity results with uh, trypsin inhibitors of Momodica conchinchinesis. Showing the uh, sequence coverage 100%, we get a de novo uh, sequencing of uh, MOCH1 peptide. And this shows the peptide, our peptide consists of 34 amino acids, having three disulfide bonds, uh, six cysteine residues, one cross-linking, a helical structure, and a stand in this small peptide. So MOCH1 was found to have a sequence similarity with the trypsin inhibitor 1 of Modica conchinchinesis. The protein sequence coverage of MOCH1 was recorded to be 100% with uh, MO MCOTI1, from the trypsin inhibitor protein. The major difference between the MOCH1 and MOMCO is the presence of antimicrobial activity of MOCH1, whereas MOMCO do not have antimicrobial activity. So we got the sequence, amino acid sequence, uh, de novo sequence was revealed. So uh, MOCH1 comprises of we know that now we know that MOCH1 comprises of 34 amino acids having the three disulfide bonds between 88 and 25, 15 and 27, 21 and 23. This occurrence of disulfide bonds create a knot, knot like structure describing that protein is protein falls under knot in type category, which are sometimes called as cyclotyrins. So this is a cyclic peptide and this having the reactive bond between the 10th and the 11th amino acid residue, the cyclotyrin peptide uh, crosslink was present between the first and the 34th glycine amino acid. Helix and structure was, helix and um, strand was present within the MOCH1. So in silico analysis of MOCH1 peptide, so we we'll do a BLAST-P. Many of you um, know about BLAST-P. Uh, we did a BLAST-P and we got a sequence, a similarity. And from this, we got to know that the sequence, our peptide falls under the plant trypsin inhibitor super, super family category. So BLAST-P indicate that MOCH1 peptide was 94.12% homologous to trypsin inhibitor, pept uh, inhibitor peptide, which is isolated from Momodica conchinchinesis. However, however, this is very strange. MOCH1, which we isolated from the Momodica charanthia, shows 63 to 67% similarity with the already reported, whereas shows the high similarity with another species. This results indicated that the putative conserved domain belongs to a protein uh, plant trypsin inhibitor, that plant TI superfamily, and has a reactive residue lysine at 10th position. This is the phylogenetic tree showing the um, homologous homology between our query sequence with the another sequences. So the phylogenetic tree shows the hierarchical relationship between the similar set of data. The phylogram represents the sequence similarity between the MOCH1 with trypsin inhibitor and trypsin inhibitors of Modica conchinchinesis. So conserved domain database again show that the plant uh, our peptide fall under squash, squash PTI, squash plant trypsin inhibitor superfamily. So uh, we use different tools like Interpro, Smart, Again, we from these all tools, we got the information. Yes, this uh, is the plant trypsin inhibitor peptide. And pro Interpro also uh, revealed that the presence of protease aminase inhibitor family. Uh, gene annotation predicted that the molecular weight of MOCH1 have serine type endopeptides inhibitor act activity. And SMART tool again reveal the same results. The peptide falls under uh, protein trypsin inhibitor. Then the structure of MOCH1, we did a CD. In CD, we observed a positive band, a small positive band at one 
217 nanometers and a large negative band at 198 nanometers. This indicates the presence of beta sheets and the turns in MOCH1 peptide. So this is the in silico structure prediction of MOCH1 using the FIRE2 tool. So this shows the presence of alpha helix and a beta strand and 38% is distorted. So sh this um, showing the six residues of cysteine and a reactive inhibitory site at 10th position of for lysine and showing a homology with the domain phyte, a plant trypsin inhibitor. So the secondary structure prediction reveals that the presence of 24% alpha helix, 12% beta sheets, 38% is dotted in the structure of MOCH1 peptide. In CN3D viewer, MOCH1 peptide was found to be homologous with MO, MCO trips TI1 and two trypsin inhibitor structures isolated from the Momotica conjin chinases. Three um, disulfide bonds were observed, two sheets were present in the structure. The presence of an uh, inhibitory sequence lysine at 10th position was observed. The MOCH1 peptide uh, shows the presence of trypsin inhibitor domain with of 27 amino acid residue, which is conserved domain basically. So conclusion is during the course of evolution, it has been observed that human pathogen bacteria has been able to develop resistance against human antimicrobial peptide. However, the same is not possible for the PAMPs. Plant varies from vary from animals to their protein modification system and thereby renders them less amenable to human pathogen. So the plants can be the appealing choice as they are not themselves under the attack of human pathogens. Thereby, it is unlikely that these pathogens will get exposed to PMPs and or modify themselves to become resistance against these PMPs. So the isolated novel AMP, that is CMOCH1, is 3.7 kTa from the Modica Chirancia, like Corella, has a potential to be developed as a drug for the treatment of pathogenic microinfections. In silico analysis, confirmed that the MOCH1 belongs to the plant trypsin inhibitor family under the Norton type antimicrobial peptide, uh, which come under cyclotidins, have a conserved cysteine residue and helical structure. Major feature of our novel peptide is its small size, due to which it might have a strong penetration power, which penetrate within the membrane of microorganism and making it more potent drug candidate for the drug development. So what are the future perspectives? The further studies on stability and the drug delivery system need to be carried out to improve its efficiency against the various pathogenic and multi-drug resistant microorganisms. Antimicrobial antibiotics are uh, utilized in the food industry and aquaculture. The residues may impact the taste of the food and may cause harm to the human being. So plant AMPs can be used in food industry to reduce the food spoilers. Most of the animal natural plant AMPs are encoded by specific genes and that are constantly express at the basal level. So therefore, we can induce that specific genes either by pathogen attack or by changing some physiochemical stress, doing some physiochemical stress uh, for the overproduction of that particular AMPs, which we want to produce so that we can extract that and we can, we can do, we can use as a drug. So recent studies from the IIT Delhi suggested that these small novel peptides can conjugate with the already existing drug mitis, which ultimately increase the penetration power of that particular drug. So the natural PAMPs can be extracted and then modify to increase the efficacy and stability of the peptide from the various against various microorganisms. Plant AMPs can also be used as biopesticides and bioinsecticides. Different types of AMPs can be isolated from the various plants and even within the plant, from different parts, we can extract a different peptide against a different microorganism. So these are the few publications from my PhD work. These are the few references. So thanks to my supervisor, uh, Department of Biotech, Punjab University, DAV College, our principal sir, and my teaching and non-teaching facilities, and friends, family. Thank you so much, sir.
So this is a beginning of the campaign, not the end. It's just the opening shot and we are just getting started. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Very excellent presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, ma'am, I would like to ask you a question myself. Yes, sir. Uh, since there are many students uh, in the audience and we are also doing live streaming, yes, uh, can you tell us uh, what kind of challenges you faced while doing your PhD work? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, using plant is a very challenging because a plant generally produce these PMPs when the plant is under stress either or the pathogen or any other physiological stress like salt, water stress, it all depends. So every each and every plant creates the PMP, but depending upon the conditions the plant is growing affects the concentration of that particular plant. If we can say in, we do the uh, PTC, we do PTC and we uh, plant tissue culture and we infect the plant with a particular pathogen and then we see the expression level of that particular AMP that might increase because these PMPs act as a uh, defense purpose, these defense purpose. But uh, what, when we uh, have the plant, we have to take it a lot like kilos and we get around 10 mg, 5 mg, PMP purified. So the first challenge is for the uh, using plant is the amount of plant we require. Just like in case of microorganism, we get it in overnight, we get it in liters and liters of microorganism. We extract it very easily from the micro. But in case of plant, and in my study, I do not sacrifice any plant. I use the leaves, flowers, which is easily available. I do not sacrifice a single plant during my PhD plan. So my focus is not to sacrifice that particular plant because if you are sacrifice that particular plant, if that particular plant is in danger, then there is no use to remove from the environment and do something. And ultimately you are getting or not, it is, you, you never know. Right, right, right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I have just one more request. Uh, can you type your email ID in the chat box? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. And uh, meanwhile, uh, whoever has questions, uh, please unmute yourself and start the video and you may ask the questions one by one. Yes, madam, this is uh, Dr. Ma Malini Basu from Kolkata. Can Hello, I really ask someone quick question? Like initially, when you started presenting, like in one of the slides, like you said, like to went for uh, small um, molecular weight proteins. Like initially, like uh, from review of literature, like the focus was so. This is one question. And second is like the plants that you have chosen, like uh, are they sort of uh, seasonal or like it is found all the year round? So um, uh, the venture for finding those compounds in those plants, how far is the availability around the year? Uh, yes, ma'am. It all depends. I mostly, I selected the plant uh, for the seed, which is available throughout the year so that it can be easy for me for the selection. And for some plants, I selected the season of their flowering because in just like in case of bougainvillea, bougainvillea uh, shows leaf pattern each and everything is the same. Each and everything is same. But during flowering only, I can have a different uh, cultivar. Sometimes it is pink, it is white. So during flowering, only then I collect that bougainvillea. And sometimes in uh, by other plants, like just like uh, Borevia diffusia, it is easily available uh, as a weed. All these plants are normally a weed, most of the uh, weed. So I select all these plants like this. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Halamitar, you may ask the questions. Yeah, yeah ma'am. <laughs> indicated uh, initially itself that very good presentation. Thank you, sir. Only, only I had a little bit difficulty with reference to the plates which you were showing antibacterial activity, say either in the labeling or uh, making a good uh, quality petri plates or uh, uh, diffusion assays, you know, yes. that actually you should have uh, improved. Yes. A very uh, simple when we actually screen any antimicrobial peptides, we as well go with the selective screening. Yes. which I have not found in your presentation. The yes. second one, the, the uh, interpretation which you gave with relation to why they are not killing gram-negative. Uh, that was quite, uh, hypothetical. You know, I don't think... Yes, it was, I have uh, not uh, proven that. Yes. 
and then when you, the literature. Yeah, when you concentrated and did the SDS page, but you are not shown that that the band which are showing the antibacterial, uh, no, the band which you are seeing on the jail has the antibacterial activity. Yes, sir. I did the MIC for that. No, so MIC you did of the sample. You didn't do of the jail itself. What we are the jail. Yes, sir. For was... jail itself, I didn't do that. Yeah. So that was actually was required to tell that the corresponding band do exhibit the antibacterial activity. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The last comment. But of course, when we are looking for a drug resistant bacteria, taking a, some a sort of no, some setup a drug resistant bacteria like MRS here, there or VR is there and taking how it is active. I think that should have been also much useful. I'm sure that your guide supervisor also would have been interested to know whether this plant extract or in that or not. In addition to this, why you did not uh, use perhaps NIM as a director or a turmeric plants? They're supposed to have a very good antibacterial activity. Dr. Swaranjit Singh is also there online. I hope he will also support. Uh, maybe yes. you have got much more uh, useful information. Uh, that is what I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, congratulations. Very good work uh, and very nice presentation, actually. Thank All you. the best. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Swaranjit, sir, has conveyed her regards, ma'am. Sir is in the prayer Swaranjit meeting. Swaranjit, another day. Huh. Bye, sir. That's Hello. Uh, sorry, Dhanpal sir, please go ahead. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Han sir. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, my my question was that uh, why they not use multi drug resistance bacteria, which is reported. So they use Bacillus subtilis. So then Staphylococcus aureus. So Bacillus subtilis is not too much variable thing for us, but uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Have you used the multi-drug resistance Staphylococcus aureus for no, your sir. study? No, sir. No, sir. Because we do not have BSL facility in our vicinity. So that is why we are not able to use the multi-drug resistant. For that, we have to contact okay, the other right. laboratory so that they can do. It's okay. Yes, sir. I think MBSI provides very good platform so that the researcher they can actually communicate or interact with others. And yeah. see, because in our laboratory, we have BSL to a facility and we have actually several drug resistant bacteria. Even we have paper in microbial pathogenesis where we actually take some of the antimicrobial peptides of microbial origin for that purpose. I think MBSI should actually use this platform to exchange ideas, views, and wherever the people can uh, collaborate or do at least a small experiment. Definitely from that angle, I think it will be useful. I hope our president will agree with my opinion. There are some uh, questions, I think, in the chat box. Maybe yes. Jay can read that. Yeah. Uh, so that will be yeah. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have some questions. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank to part of this, and uh, this was a very valuable uh, presentation because I am also working on antimicrobial peptides, but not from plants, but uh, uh, microorganisms. So I am starting my PhD on this one, and I have got my proposal approved from the Mumbai University. So now I will be starting this work. So I have some questions like, uh, what are the preservation techniques or what are the temperatures which we have to take care of uh, so that our antimicrobial peptide don't get deactivated or inactivated? Huh? So uh, peptides, ah, if you are working, if you are interested on less than 10, then always work in at four degrees, either in the cold chambers or uh, any other technique you can use for the maintaining the sample at four always, always. And store your peptides or any extract, any protein in at minus 20 degrees only, not below that. Because these are the small, if you are working on the small antimicrobial peptides, basically less than 10 and 20, these are very, very small and they just unfold easily. If you are giving a high temperature, little bit, they just unfold and they lose the activity. So I prefer uh, only minus 20. And if I am using the sample uh, for antimicrobial activity and another, I just do it four degrees only, not above that temperature. Thank you very much, ma'am. It's okay. Thank you, ma'am. 
Uh, there is one question in the chat box. Uh, yes, Sardha is asking, any anti-cancer activity has been observed during no, your... No, 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 I do not do that. For that, we have to screen for for the cell lines, basically, cancerous cell right. lines. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Do we have any more questions in the audience? Please unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, uh, morning, ma'am. Morning. Excellent presentation. This is Kavita from Parameter. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, ma'am, I have two queries. Like uh, the first one is generally when we take up the medicinal plants, we go in for the secondary metabolites, which have a lot of uh, activity, even in the commercialization of the products, all kind of secondary metabolites, starting with alkaloids, phenols, flavonoids. So uh, can you please compare the antimicrobial peptides and the secondary metabolites, the first one? Ma'am, and the second Yes, yes. Yeah, and the, and the second one is uh, what type of vehicle control you have used? Have you used the vehicle control in case of the antimicrobial assays? So I could not see that. And what was the uh, solvent or the vehicle which you have dissolved your, uh, or finally the extracted protein, concentrated protein, so that that has a lot of role against the microbe when you're yes. doing your assays. So yes. the vehicle control is again, I feel the most important one, which we have to compare uh, whether the vehicle has an activity or as such our uh, um, desired compounds has an activity. So can you please comment on these two things, ma'am? Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I purified peptide. Uh, in my whole process, I used the PBS buffer, 7.4 pH. And after purification and after lyophilization, I dissolved my peptide in millicube water. Okay. And uh, there's a difference between a metabolite and a peptide, or you can say a protein. Protein, this is a protein which mainly helps in the defense purpose. And they... <coughs> Plant always create the metabolite uh, for other, again, same for the defense purpose, but they are organic solvent and proteins usually are less. You can say if you are going to dissolve it or you can extract the protein in the organic, but you have to dissolve, you have to uh, do the evaporation and then again dissolve that protein in aqueous only. Only then the protein is uh, remain active. If you're not doing that, if you are leaving the protein sample uh, for the long, the protein will lose its activity. They will unfold, they will not work properly. So they are water soluble uh, for the main purpose. So you mean to say that you have used that as a vehicle control, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. In your essays? Yes, ma'am. PBS is used as a vehicle control. PBS is used as a vehicle Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So secondary metabolites you have not concentrated on? You have, no, have you compared any kind of results? No, no, no. I do not do work on secondary metabolites. Okay, so in same trianthema we have done and we have uh, concentrated on a flavonoid which is having a lot of activity compared to this. So we thought, uh, okay, let us focus on this also. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hello. Hello, you are. I ask everybody to mute themselves if, uh, yeah. if they are asking a question. Uh, first of all, well, congratulations on your PhD award. Is there a sound? Yes, sir. Audible, audible. Okay, okay very good. Uh, this is uh, my Sandeep Patil from Sinjan Children Hospital, China. So, <clears throat> my first question is, if you have the concentration of the plant and the yield of the plant, if it is less, why you go for the plants? Why now you choose for the uh, microbial peptides, some peptides from the microbes, and uh, use against the uh, antimicrobial, the first thing. The second thing is uh, you do the mostly focus on the characterization of the peptides. But your object of your work is the object of your work is the antimicrobial. So if apnejolia has staporias bacillus, it's a normal flora bacteria. Agar amne wo extract agar de diya patient ko to wo to normal flora mar jayega uska. To aap Disease causing ke liye hum, chahiye, treatment chahiye, we are looking for the treatments because uh, I'm working in the hospital, so I'm just uh, focusing on the uh, my clinical uh, aspects. Ki mujhe treatment karna hai for like uh, cystic fibrosis patient, hai, to mujhe lung infection treat karna hai, to usme main antibiotics nahi de sakta, uske liye main kuch, uh, peptides try karna chahta hu. 
ऐसा ऐसा करने से आपने तो उसको एंटीमाइक्रोबल एक्टिविटी नॉर्मल बैक्टीरिया की जैसे स्टेप और एस लिया है आपने उसका कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है रेजिस्टेंट कंट्रोल नहीं या कोई इन्फेक्शियस एजेंट नहीं है या कोई एंटीबायोटिक के साथ कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है जैसे अगर वो फर्स्ट लाइन के अगेंस्ट जो जोन ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस है अगर वो बढ़ा दे रहा है मतलब वो उसका जो ससेप्टिबिलिटी है अगर वो कम है और आपके ड्रग आपका जो है वो कम है कंपेयर टू द एंटीबायोटिक्स सो वाई आई चूज यूर ड्रग और यूर पेप्टाइड टू ट्रीट द पेशेंट्स बात मेरी समझ आ रही है आपकी हाँ जी सर, मैं क्या सर, बता रहा हूँ आपका जो मोलिकुल है जैसे कि एक टैबलेट है आपका मोलिकुल है हाँ और ये एंटीबायोटिक है उस एंटीबायोटिक का जो जो इफेक्ट है वो ज्यादा है दोनों का रेजिस्टेंस दोनों का दो, दोनों किलिंग कर रहे हैं बैक्टीरिया को लेकिन आपका जो मोलिकुल है वो कई किल कर रहा है लेकिन वो कम कर रहा है मेरा एंटीबायोटिक फर्स्ट जनरेशन ज्यादा अच्छी के साथ कर रहा है तो मैं आपका वो टैबलेट्स क्यों यूज करूं मैं एंटीबायोटिक यूज करूंगा ना फर्स्ट जनरेशन यस yes, तो uh, उसको उसको आप उसको कैसे प्लांट्स बेसिकली प्लांट्स का यूज करने का पर्पस ही ये है बिकॉज जो माइक्रोब्स हैं हम माइक्रोब से ही एंटीबायोटिक्स क्रीट आउट करवा रहे हैं और उन्हीं के अगेंस्ट यूज कर रहे हैं तो yes. एक टाइम पे वो रेजिस्टेंस डेवलप हो जाएगी बिकॉज दे नोन टू देयर सिस्टम सो प्लांट्स के सिस्टम के साथ जो हम मतलब पेप्टाइड है दे आर नॉट इन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद देम सो उनके लिए वो बहुत ही नई चीज होगी टू डेवलप अ रेजिस्टेंस अभी आपको ये भी पता होगा फिर हम जेनरिक बनाते हैं मेडिसिन को यस सो इट्स अ सिमिलर टू द एंटीबायोटिक्स इट्स दे आर नॉट आल्सो फॉर द फ्रॉम द बैक्टीरिया और कुछ हम मॉलिक्यूल्स भी देते हैं एंटीबायोटिक्स के अलावा भी मॉलिक्यूल्स देते हैं किल करने के उसके अगेंस्ट भी वो रेजिस्टेंट बनाते हैं तो आपके ऐसे कैसे श्योर कर सकते कि आप उस पेप्टाइड्स के अगेंस्ट कुछ नहीं बनाएंगे क्योंकि आपने बोला कि वो तो नेगेटिव में तो बट नेगेटिव में तो बना ही नहीं रहा नेगेटिव में तो रेजिस्टेंस दिखाई नहीं रहा तो आप बोल रहे कि सेलवॉल को पेनिट्रेट कर रहा है लेकिन उनके सेलवॉल को पेनिट्रेट करने में अगर आप सेलवॉल का स्ट्रक्चर देखेंगे आप बोलेंगे ग्लाइकोपेप्टाइड से चले जाता है दोनों में ग्लाइकोपेप्टाइड होता है तो दोनों के अंदर जाना चाहिए फर्स्ट थिंग द सेकेंड थिंग इज आपको मोड ऑफ एक्शन पता नहीं उसको पेप्टाइड का हाँ जी अगर आप उसको एंटी माइक्रोबिल एजेंट बोल रहे हैं तो हाउ यू कैन सी एंटी माइक्रोबिल एजेंट इज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ द एम आई सी एम आई सी इज जस्ट इट्स नथिंग नाव हम उसको कुछ नहीं कंसिडर करते उस, उसको छोड़ दो तो उसको उस मोलिकुल का मोड ऑफ एक्शन क्या है दैट वी नीड टू स्टडी सर समझ मेरी बात समझ आ रही है आपको उस yes, मोलिकुल का जो एक्शन है अगर वो आप अगर आप सेल वॉल के ऊपर बोल रहे हो उसका एक्शन है तो वो इट शुड बी एक्शिंग ऑन द ग्राम नेगेटिव शुड बी एक्शिंग ऑन द ग्राम पॉजिटिव बट वो नेगेटिव पे नहीं कर रहा है पॉजिटिव पे कर रहा है वो थोड़ा सा वो क्वेश्चन मार्क है कि ऐसा क्यों कर रहा है और सारे आपके मोलिकुल सारे पेप्टाइड्स ऐसे कर रहे हैं ऐसे तो होना नहीं चाहिए और आप बोल रहे हैं कि ट्रिप्सिन इनिबिटर है सिमिलर टू ट्रिप्सिन इट शुड बी गो इन साइड इन द सेल वॉल थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच and those are very valid questions indeed uh, this is the beauty of the platform ma'am <laughs> you you get to uh, you know face nee, this aapne acha kaam kiya hai main usko kaam ko criticize nahi kar raha hu it's a, just a, a scientific question hai isko ki kyunki uh, main thoda clinical oriented dekhunga agar mujhe kyunki hum antimicrobial peptides bana rahe hain na to uh, how thank you thank you for your input sir thank you uh do, do we have any more questions in the audience uh we can take one or two more questions and uh, everybody please note samriti ma'am has given her email id in the chat box so you may connect with her aur main samriti ma'am ko bolunga agar aap if you look for this agar aapko s is area mein kaam karna hai to you just uh, maybe follow the windy Uh, professor windy is from the uh, netherland he is working in the imris imris hospital so she is working on the such kind of uh, peptides which uh, used for the uh, we are just uh, using to in the cystic fibrosis patient because in the uk they are it's major concern so you may be contact to the windy and uh, windy will be guide you perfectly how they can be in the uh, work out in the patients everything thank you sir 
Sultana is asking, AMPs are produced by human cells too. How effectively those AMPs isolated from plants or microbes act than the native ones? Pardon, sir? Uh, it is in the box, ma'am. I will just repeat one more time. Yes, sir. AMPs are produced by human cells too. How effectively those AMPs isolated from plants or microbes act than the native ones? Uh, sir, because in native, it is synthesized or it is produced in very less amount. So when we have some disease, some in type of infection, in uh, case of some immunocompromised patients, we can give the, uh, the, this drug just to increase the fighting efficiency of the body. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, we can take one more question, one last question. Uh, anybody? Please unmute yourself. Okay, I guess uh, we do not have any more questions. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, ma'am. It thank was a very nice presentation. And thank you, sir, for opening new perspective. We, we are always looking for productive discussions. Yes, yes it's great. You both have done a good job. You both have done a good job. Thank you, sir. Uh, Patil, sir, Patil, sir uh, may you please share your email ID? Yeah, yeah, I can share. Yeah, please. That would be sir, great. Please share in chat box. Hello. My, myself. I'm Dr. Patil, Chairman, uh, MBSI Awards. Uh, which Patil, sir, you want? Uh, uh, sir, uh, the, the person who is talking from China. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's uh, some other person. Okay. Okay, ma'am, uh, there is one more question. How to approach for in silico design as a beginner? Uh, sir, for that, uh, you just go for the different tools which are freely available. You just click and you will get an information. If you have a sequence of amino acid, you have a sequence of gene, you have a structure, you just put the sequence in their format and they will show you all the similarities present in the microbes, plants, each and everything. Perfect, perfect, ma'am. Uh, uh, sir, uh, please share your email ID and then uh, everybody can note that down. So thank you, everybody. Uh, on next Sunday, we will again have another speaker in this PhD webinar series. So far, we have completed uh, 20 speakers, including today. And we are giving memento and certificate to every speaker. And thank you for being here, everybody. And once again, thank you, Samriti, ma'am. I you. especially would like to thank uh, Deshmukh, sir, for providing us this valuable platform. Thank you, everybody. See you on next Sunday. Goodbye.